Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about the pin constraint. The pin constraint can be found in the effects menu set under fields and solvers, create pin constraint. We've already gone over the nail constraint, which you can find uh, at this link here. If you click that, you can check take a look at my tutorial going over the nail constraint. And as I detailed in that constraint video, when I go into the pin constraint options, the options here are actually just the constraint options. They're not specific to the pin or to the nail or anything like that. I can simply go to constraint type within the constraint options and change this type to be any of the other constraint types, such as the nail, which we've already gone over. If I choose nail, you'll notice the only difference is that with pin, we have the interpenetrate checkbox here available, and while with nail we don't. The other constraint types have other settings that become available with them as you activate certain things. The spring constraint type, for example, has an entire section down here for these spring attributes. But we're going to be dealing with the pin constraint type and the only difference between pin and nail when it comes to the options available is again, like I said, the interpenetrate checkbox. We also have the set initial position checkbox here, which if we check this, we get the XYZ slider for setting the initial position. But I'll uncheck that for now. Also notice that if I edit reset settings, it'll actually change the constraint type to nail. And we're obviously dealing with a pen constraint type for this video, so make sure if you do reset the settings to go back to pen. First, we also have the constraint name. You can simply give your constraint a name if you wish. If you don't, it'll give it'll automatically assign a default name to your pen constraint. Also, for the pen constraint to work, you need two objects to apply the pen constraint to. If I simply hit apply right now, nothing happens. So let's minimize this and go to create polygon primitives. And I'll just simply make a couple spheres. I'll select create this one, control D to duplicate it, and I'll move it over here. And I'll hide the grid. So now I have these two spheres to use for my pen constraint. So we're going to pin these two spheres together, is what we're doing. So I'm going to select both spheres, go back to my constraint options. We have our pin constraint type. I'm, going to just, I'm just going to leave it at the default, meaning that interpenetrate is not checked, nor is set initial position, and hit create. So what I get here is this line between the two spheres with this little box in the middle. If I hit the 4 key for wireframe and select the constraint, you see that the line simply goes to the center point of the spheres. This also makes your spheres become rigid active bodies by default whenever you apply this to them. You'll see as I select my sphere I have this little X in the middle that indicates that they now have become rigid bodies. I press 5 to go back to shaded view. So initially nothing really happens until you apply a dynamic force to the objects that have a pin between them. So, for example, if we were to select this sphere, and let's go to Fields and Solvers, and let's do a gravity effect. So gravity's been applied to this sphere, and let me go to Display, UI Elements. I'll break this off and turn on Time Slider and Range Slider. And let's go into our, click this little orange guy running away from the gear here, and choose our playback speed to be Play Every Frame, hit Save. And if it play, it happens really quickly. Actually, let me go back and instead of play every frame, let's say play half speed, which is 12 frames per second. Hit save. So remember, gravity is only applied to this sphere, not to this one. The gravity is not actually affecting this sphere at all. But when I hit play, you'll notice, let me pause, this sphere, which is being affected by the gravity, is dropping down from the gravity's effect, and this sphere is not. It's staying up here. As we continue to play, though, you'll notice that this sphere is obviously being dragged down with this one because they're pinned together. So that's what the pin constraint does. This object has been pinned to this one, and this object is being pulled down by gravity, and because these two are now pinned together, this object is being pulled down as well. So let me rewind this. I can uh, select my constraint here, and I can actually move it around, such as up here, for example, and now when I hit play, 
you get a little bit of a different effect where the pin or the line connecting the two spheres has a little bit of a slack to it and so now when this sphere is being pulled by gravity you'll see this one is still staying when in its place originally it was being pulled down much quicker it waits for that slack to get pulled out of the constraint and now there's this linear line yanking down the second sphere from the gravity like so so rewinding it hit play you'll see the second sphere drops and yanks down the first sphere due to the pin effect between them so my moving this pin up between the two spheres is actually changing the initial position of the effect if I were to delete this constraint select the two spheres and go back to my fields and solvers create pin constraint options and choose set initial position I can use these sliders to set the initial position or I can do like I did before and simply move it after the fact for example if I change the Y position to be 5 for example there we go you'll see that the constraint gets moved up to the 5 position and the reason why it's above this first sphere is because it's using the grid as its value. It's not simply five units above the middle section between the two spheres. It's literally zero five zero. When it comes to translate x is zero, translate y is five, translate z is also zero. And so it's that positioning puts it right here. So I can hit play again and you'll see a different result based on that different initial position. But like I said, I can simply move it over here if I wish. And that's applying the same effect as adjusting those sliders. It's just doing it after creating it. And I can hit play. I get this. Go back to my options, fields and solvers, create pen constraint options. So by default, when the two spheres actually collide with each other, which can happen if we hit play, let's see if that happens any. Just depends on the, yeah, it's not happening right now in this particular setup. But if I were to, all right, so this one, which is being affected by gravity, is above the other. Hit play. There we go. So now they they hit and they collide together. They they actually bounce off of each other whenever they uh, hit each other like that. So by choosing the inner penetrate option, and I can minimize this, I can select the pin constraint and choose inner penetrate and turn it on. Enter. So now when I hit play, now the two spheres just kind of merge into each other like this they don't bounce off each other and that's what interpenetrate turns on or off is whether or not the two objects will hit each other or go right through and essentially that's all there is to the pin constraint that you have the two objects that are pinned together you have that little uh, square in the middle that you can change this angle of the pin because you kinda have like a ball joint in between two metal poles and then the two objects are ad adhered to the metal poles on either end and you have the ball joint in the middle so that ball joint will kind of rotate and swing around based on the dynamic forces applied to the two objects so that is the pin constraint in Maya you'll find it again under the fields and solvers and they have like this legacy rigid body section create pin constraint if you have any questions please feel free to ask in the comments if I miss something definitely let me know. I want to try and give you all the information that you need to work with the pin constraint. We'll be going over the other constraints soon. Uh, if you're watching this, you know, soon after I put it up, thanks again for your patience and that time, the gap between videos. I had a lot of issues uh, that I've detailed in the in my uh, I'm back video. If you're interested, you can see that here. And uh, thanks again for your patience and welcome back to my channel. I hope you enjoy. I'll continue to add more videos. And uh, thanks again for watching.